Well, today we're heading into the Elizabeth A. Sackler Wing at the Brooklyn Museum to check out Judy Chicago's seminal piece, The Dinner Party. Well, one amazing thing about this opportune moment that I'm getting to view this piece at is that right now there's no one else in the room. And so the dinner party is an important piece in feminist art uh, from the 1970s. And it's made up of a triangle and there's 39 place settings, each that represent and commemorate an important women from history. And the settings have a embroidered runner, a golden chalice, the utensils, and the porcelain plate. Judy Chicago's working in mediums that were traditionally associated with like women's craft and like low art and raising them to the level of high art and these are women that were originally written out of history and we're starting with the primordial goddess and each place setting contrasts a chinese painted porcelain plate that utilizes butterfly or vulva imagery and contrast that with various designs of embroidered runners. And in the center floor on the tiles are written the names of 999 other important women. This one's the fertile goddess. Oh, it looks a bit like a Venus of Willendorf type of figure on the runner. And Judy Chicago worked on this with a lot of other people over a period of six years. <clears throat> Using mediums that are normally associated with craft like ceramics and textiles. This one is called, this is Cali. Here's the snake goddess. This is associated with matriarchal religion of the Minoan civilization and represented by the snake holding goddess figurines discovered in Crete. And so the plates start out a bit more simple and you can see they're flat in nature and by the end they actually become more three-dimensional to re represent the woman you know emerging from the oppressive situations that they were in. This one is Amazon, embodiment of the society of powerful warrior women described in ancient Greek mythology. And so the consistency of the runner and the utensils and plate and chalice represent the fact that each of these women had the same set of circumstances to deal with the same repression outside forces. This is really beautiful embroidery work. The imagery of like the butterfly or vulva type of imagery was really new and kind of controversial at the time. 
This was in the 1970s. This one is Boadicea, the British warrior queen who led her people in battle against oppressive Roman forces. And I sure like the imagery on this plate. This plate is actually the first of the plates that are starting to get some three-dimensionality to the design pattern. It's hard to really see in the film, but there's actually some... Um, the relief to the shapes, they kind of actually come forward a little bit. They're not just patterns painted on the ceramic dish. So that's coming to the end of wing one, and each of these wings actually represents a period in history. So wing one was from prehistory to classical Rome. And now we're coming into wing two, which is from the beginning of Christianity to the Reformation. And also this piece um, relates to the idea of the Last Supper and the idea of rep representing the women that were cooking dinners for things like the Last Supper. And this is an amazing piece. This one is Theodora, a Byzantine empress who initiated refor uh, reforms for women, helping prevent their mistreatment and affor affording them greater rights. And the design of this plate is meant to um, tie in with mosaics from a um, place in Ravenna. And uh, they had to create like innovative techniques to get that kind of mosaic type of look to the plate. And I've been to that church in Ravenna and it's otherworldly, it's really beautiful. And some of the runners sort of tie in, like integrate more with the plates and some seem more oppressive um, to create the context and the contrast of the idea of the woman in her society. And this runner here is actually related to the unicorn tapestries, um, the fence that you can kind of see behind it is sort of like the fenced in enclosure that encloses the unicorn and the unicorn tapestries at the cloisters in New York. And so it's kind of having her, this blossoming, amazing woman, you know, kind of imprisoned in this environment. That's an amazing piece. I love the runner around this and the design. Each piece is so unique, which is actually to re represent how all the women are really different and really unique. They're not all just the same stereotype of women.
this piece in particular, the runner is meant to really show like the sharp, like invading oppressive energies surrounding. And actually on the underside of each runner is a whole nother design, often really beautiful, which we of course can't see, which is to represent, you know, the inner um, gifts and beauty that each woman has that isn't always immediately apparent. This is Queen Elizabeth. And her plate has this surrounding element. Hmm, Artemisia Gentileschi, the famous Renaissance painter. So we're coming up to wing three now, and this wing represents uh, from the American Revolution to the Women's Revolution. And the runners are seeming more intricate and the plates are starting to have more um, relief, not this one, but coming up. This one has some really interesting beadwork going on above it. This plate's starting to show a lot of relief, the kind of peeling back of forms. And there's actually a really interesting YouTube video of Judy Chicago explaining the symbolism and influences behind every piece. And I'll put a link to it in this video. You can see we're getting a lot of three-dimensionality to the form in this plate. The women are really starting to emerge from their circumstances. Emily Dickinson and the really ruffly Pinks are interesting in this piece. The contrast between, now the edges of the runners are even getting varied, and the contrast between that and the sharp, straight, white napkin is neat. Virginia Wolf.
And the last plate here is Georgia O'Keeffe. And the imagery on this plate isn't just a Georgia O'Keeffe flower, it's really combined with Judy Chicago's own imagery, influenced and inspired by Georgia's paintings. So this is an amazing and really important piece that we're really lucky to have in permanent installation at the Brooklyn Museum where it showed in 1980 and has returned 